Hi, I'm Austin Maples. Today, I'm gonna walk you through a drawing tutorial of how to draw roses, therefore leaves, the way that I do, using an iPad with Procreate, give you some little tips, walk you through each process. Hopefully it's helpful for you and entertaining. Let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is open up a new canvas on Procreate. I like to pre-make some canvases for myself. I have some saved here, so I like to draw in 300 DPI. Just in case I really like the drawing, I can use it later for graphic design stuff, put it on a t-shirt, use it on a website. That way the resolution isn't too low. And I like to draw on an eight and a half by 11 canvas, as you can see here. That way when I print it out on my printer, it comes right out on the right side of paper. Also, I can judge a little bit how big the design's gonna be. If you are going to tattoo the design, it's nice to have a point of reference to know how big it's gonna be printed out on the printer. Here's my eight and a half by 11 canvas. I'm just gonna start walking you through a couple things. I guess one of the first things I like to start by sketching. If you come here to the brushes, you can click on sketching. There's a pen called the 6B pencil. I really like this pencil for drawing. If you click on the pencil, you can see some settings. I like my streamline all the way up. It kind of corrects my horrible drawing and over caffeinated hands. Once you've got the sketching pencil, I like to go in here, I got my mess of palettes. I usually just start with something bright, a green or a, this like fluorescent orange. Come into the canvas and I just kind of start going. One of the first steps of drawing a rose the way that I do is I like to kind of draw a shape. I'm gonna draw a rose with a really short stem on it. First, I usually just kind of start drawing what shape I want the rose to be. I like can either do like a circle or an oval. I usually like kind of this curved bottom shape. Here's the bottom of the, kind of the bud of the rose. I start with a bit of like a squiggling line, kind of going through the top center like this. Come and do another one, maybe one more this way, like a braid, something like this. Just kind of roughing out where you'll see the folds on the rows, add some squiggles. As you can see here, there's one of the folds and then there's room for on the other side of it here where it's coming around the back. That's usually a nice look, so you can add that to both sides. And there's a little bit of a base of a simple rose shape. After this, I like to go ahead and map out where I would like the petals to be coming from. I usually start with a bigger one, and instead of it being directly in the center like this, that usually looks a little weird, I'll pick a side, either the left or the right, and make it a little bit heavier on one side. So usually draw like an ovalish shape and see maybe a petal like that. And then maybe this one's gonna go underneath it. So come over here, draw another little petal. Maybe we want a couple up here, kinda let's say one there. Maybe there's gonna be one here, one there. Now we got a rough idea. I will go in and I kind of just make some rough harder line shapes like this. And all of these are kind of just made up. Now that I have this shape, I will kind of come in here and drop the opacity of it so that I can draw over it one more time. Gonna make a new layer and come on top of the darker, darker color. So I'm gonna pick darker red and come back in and kind of change this a little bit. One thing that I actually see about this, I feel like these petals are a little bit bigger than I normally like. So I'm gonna go back in, bring up the opacity, go on this layer, click the selective tool, and use freehand. I'm gonna come in here and just grab this butted part of it. I wanna make it a little bit bigger. Over here, I'm gonna click the move tool. I'm gonna to put the movement on uniform. I'm just gonna make the rows a little bit larger on there. I like these proportions a little bit better. So I'm gonna leave it like this, come back and repeat that process. Drop the opacity, come up here to my new layer. Got my red, let's go for a darker red. Still on the sketching tool. Come in here and just kinda like Go through this with the same kind of motion. This is where you add a little bit of your flair. You can add as many little squigglies as you want. Clean up the shapes that you like. I'm gonna add another fold right here. One thing that I like to think about is these are all kind of layered on top of each other. So if you look right here, like imagine this as a butted piece inside of this, this petal. 
so they don't necessarily line up. You're going to want these outside layers to this one's coming this way, but well, then the new one's going to be housing that on the inside. So I'll come out here like this. There we go. That's a nice shape. And I'll change a lot of this stuff as I go. Just kind of feel what I think looks best. But be loose with it. You don't want it to be too rigid. You can always change it. As well, if you're going to be tattooing this, like, I change a lot of things while I'm tattooing. So as you can see, I made some of the petals a little bit sharper. I added this kind of uniform point to each one of these. Added this second little fold. I'm happy with how it's looking right now. So I'm gonna move on to some leaves. So I'm gonna go in here, grab a different color. Let's just use yellow. I'm gonna do another layer. I'm gonna put it underneath these just so that the, the lines will sit underneath them. Now, I guess let's start with the stem. I'm going to put a stem coming out of the center here. I usually, instead of it being perfectly parallel like this, I like to come out at a little bit of a, a little bit thicker at the bottom. I usually, I don't know, I always add this little stem right here just to add another level of something going on behind it. And then I'll come into here and kind of draw one of these teardrop shapes. A little bit of a bottom of it. Maybe let's add a thorn. You can have fun with this part and do whatever you like. And then now for the leaves, I like to make them a little bit bottom heavy. This rose looks like it's kind of sitting up. So I imagine some leaves out here at the bottom. The way that I was taught to draw leaves is to draw kind of like circular shapes where you would want them. So let's say we have a couple here, maybe one here. Maybe one there. Let's start with that. And then you can draw the stem or the, I guess, kind of the spine of the leaf. I like to do it in a bit of an arch going the direction that I would like it to go, putting them at different directions so that it's not too uniform again. Now you can take this circle and kind of connect it to the tip of those, the spine of the leaves. See, now we got a bit of a nice leaf shape going on. That's a little bit bottom heavy. Let's, let's add a couple leaves up here. I like to just do this classic leaf shape like this. So I'm gonna add one without a spine up there. Maybe a couple little pokey bits hanging out. Someone taught me everything's better in odd numbers, so we're going odd numbers. We got five leaves, we got three little pokey things, we got one thorn. This is looking pretty cool to me. All right, so now with this layer, I'm gonna, let's grab another color. We're just gonna draw on the same la layer. Let's grab green. <laughs> grab the color green and just kind of figure out what we want these stems to look like. Le I'm gonna pretend that I'll be tattooing this rose, so I like to think about what I'm gonna do with my shading. I like to do a type of leaf you guys have probably seen me do where there's a bit of a sharp edge and kind of these lines coming in. If you haven't seen this, you can check the link for my social media, go find a million flowers that have this same kind of shading technique. So do the spine solid black and then kind of shade in from the edges like this, leaving kind of a highlighted point right there. So I'm going to show you how to draw one of those really quick. So I would come in here and draw this spine, but leaving an edge for the rest of the kind of the leaf lines to come in. I just fully make up this part on the outside. I just add some little spiked edges. There you go. That's the leaf. Now we're going to come in and kind of do these lines. When I started drawing, somehow these lines were always really difficult for me. I like to just kind of get in a pattern with my hand. Uh, once I get the spikes on, I'll show you. So I like to kind of pick an arch that I like. That looks like a nice arch for those lines. Now I'm just going to repeat it just in a row all the way down like this. Down at the tip here, do one towards the spine. Then let's come and do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful thing about roses is they're organic. So nothing that you do here has to be perfect. You're also drawing, so none of this is permanent you should just have fun with it and figure out what feels good to you yeah, i'm just gonna go around and draw these leaves all the same doing the middle stem of the leaf adding the pointed edges leaf lines make sure i get my thorns in there let's come down here and just get a bit more what i want with the shape of this one thing you can do here with a thorn i like to sometimes if you want to see kind of the where it's connected to the stem I add this kind of heart shape like this. Actually, I don't really like that that much. Let's, 
Let's go with one of these, a little kind of hoop in. Okay, this is looking pretty cool to me. So now it's time to, if you're tattooing or even the graphic design, you're gonna wanna go and sort of finalize this. Um, this is a pretty rendered sketch, so there's not really too much to do, but let's walk through that process together. I'm gonna merge all three of these layers so that I can adjust them together. You can do that by taking your fingers and pulling them all together like this. Now they're all in the same layer, as you see. You can go in here, click this little N, and drop the opacity. Makes it a little bit easier to trace over. I like mine to be pretty low so that I don't, so I can still get another layer of being a little bit loose, not constrained to the original sketch in case I want to change some stuff. I'm going to add another layer. Don't forget this step. If you draw on top of this one, you're going to be really bummed because you're going to have to draw it all over again. One layer on top. I'm going to come back in here to the palette, find the color black. Now we're going to switch to a different pen. There's a million different things you can do. I like to use this airbrushing one. Come down here to hard airbrush. Come to the size option over here. Honestly, I just kind of make this part up. Size nine looks looks nice to me. All right, so now for the black layer. One more time, make sure you got a layer on top, not on the same layer. You got the color you like. Pick a brush that you like. I'm gonna go with the hard airbrush here. Same with the settings. I like streamline all the way up. Pick a size that you like. I think this size looks fine for me. One thing to think about if you're making a stencil, what size liner are you gonna use? Usually you don't want your stencil line to be thicker than the line you're using. I find it makes it a lot harder to get clean lines if you do that. So I like it to be the same or less than. This line looks like it's probably gonna be less than a nine round liner, which is what maybe I would use for a palm size rose. Let's just go in. I like to start right here in the center of the rose and you just start tracing these shapes. I'm pretty happy with how this rose looks, so I'm not gonna change too much about it. But yeah, this is where you can add your, your own voice to it. Obviously, this is how to draw a rose like me. Maybe it'd be good to try and draw the exact same one. Kind of see how close you can get to mine and then decide where to customize it from there. I like to move kind of quick, especially with flowers. I feel like it makes it look a little bit more organic, have a little more flow to it not too stagnant of a design. If I were to be doing this for a graphic design project or something to be printed, definitely something to pay attention to. Like, you don't want things overlapping like this or like that. But since I'm pretending this is to be tattooed, it just needs to be nice enough to put through a stencil machine. Now, when you're drawing these leaf lines, since I showed you this part's gonna be shaded, it's not too important if these lines go to the edge. Just a guideline for you to tattoo them. But like I said, if you're gonna be using this for something else, definitely make sure all your connections are clean and all your lines are straight. It's probably not as pleasant to watch being zoomed in, but I, I like to zoom in and get as close as I can to where I can make my lines in one sweeping motion without moving my hand too much. That way I'm able to stabilize and get a clean line. The streamline really helps with that, helps with the speed that I can move at. All right, well, here is what looks like the final tracing of this rose. We can now alleviate this bottom layer, leaving the finalized line drawing. Here it is. Yeah, you can add whatever kind of leaves you want. You could do them spiky or not. You could figure out a way to draw them with different shading. You could add more layers to all this stuff, but it's just a quick how to draw a rose from scratch the way that I would. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for coming to watch How to Draw a Rose. I hope it's helpful. If you liked it, you can press the like button below. If you didn't like it, can you press the button anyways? Also click subscribe if that's something you're interested in. And if at home you end up drawing your own rose or in your tattoo shop, I'd love for you to tag me on social media so that I can see what everybody creates. Well, I hope you guys have fun out there and good luck, thanks for coming. Wait, don't go. You made it to the end of the video. This really helps if you stick around for the last 20 seconds. Over here, you can click my face. That's gonna subscribe you to my channel. If you really don't wanna do that, at the very least, click the button below it and you can watch another video. I really encourage you to watch all of the videos right now. I don't know how many seconds are left, but this is going for 20 seconds. So watch it till the end. Anyways, bye.